Alright, so today we're going to do a demonstration with the alkali metals. Alkali metals are in the first group of the periodic table. They start with lithium and go all the way down to francium. We're going to be dealing with sodium today. They are extremely, extremely reactive with water. We're going to demonstrate that with sodium. And the reason they're very, very reactive is because they have a valence of one, which means they want to lose that one electron and they'll be happy to do it with any other substance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some sodium and we're going to dump it into water. It's going to react with the water to produce two things. It's going to give off hydrogen gas and it's going to give off a base. We know what a base is because bases always end in OH. Any of the alkali metals would do this, whether it's lithium or rubidium, they're all going to produce a base. The alkali metals are known as the soft metals. You can actually cut them with a knife. So let's take a look at sodium. Sodium comes in a container that is filled with oil. And the reason it's filled with oil is because we want to protect what's in there, the sodium, from moisture. And we know that oil doesn't like moisture. So I'm going to take a piece of sodium out. The first thing you'll probably notice is that it does not really look like a metal. It looks just like a rock. The reason for that is the sodium, it's so reactive that the outside of it is very, very quick to react with open air. So I'm going to take this scalpel and I'm going to cut into the sodium. Now remember, sodium is an alkaline metal, a soft metal. You can actually cut it with a knife. So here we go. I'm going to cut it. You can see, pretty easy to slice into. Get my tweezers here to help me out. We're using a plate that's plastic, so hopefully I'm not pressing too hard. And as you can see, there is a lot of shininess and luster when you cut it open, and you'll see the same thing on this one as well. Can you see that? Can you see it? Okay. So that's what makes it a, uh, a, me a metal. It would conduct electricity, conduct electricity if we, if we ran wires through it, but we wouldn't want to do that because it would probably catch on fire within the, the air that it was sitting in. All right, so let's perform this experiment. Let's take a piece of sodium, and we're going to dump it into some water. Now over here... I have some water, and I'm not going to. T I'm not going to put a huge piece into it because first off, I don't want to waste it, and second, there's hydrogen gas that's produced, and the hydrogen gas can explode. So we don't want that to happen, even though it might be kind of cool looking. I'm going to take a piece, just about a pea size, about like that, and we're going to take it in a second here. We're going to dump it into the water. But before I do that, I'm going to take the rest of the sodium and put it back in the container. Oopsie. And the reason I'm getting another piece out is because I'm going to do it twice. So let's take the pieces that we're not using and put them back into the oil. Now we're also going to treat the water with something called phenolphthalein. This stuff is a liquid that turns color when a base is present. It's clear when there's no base, and it turns pink when there is a base. So if there's a base produced, it should turn pink when we add it, when we add the sodium. So I'm gonna just put this in there. Okay, again, the only purpose of this is to show us that a base is being produced. It's not really gonna react with the sodium, okay? You also might see some fizzing coming up off the surface. That's the hydrogen gas with lots of water vapor. You really can't see the water. Excuse me, you really can't see the hydrogen. What you're seeing is the water vapor, but there's hydrogen embedded in it. Okay, so let's try the first one. So I'm gonna ask my camera person just to kind of focus right here in this area. And we're gonna take our piece of sodium, and if all goes well, we should see a reaction with the water 
and a phenolphthalein should cause the water to turn pink because of a base being produced. Here we go. And you can see it's moving around on the surface of the water. That's the hydrogen gas kind of propelling it. And we definitely see a changeover to pink. So that's a positive test for a base. And we're going to let it go till it finishes out. It's decided to go along the side, which is fine. Eventually, it'll completely go away. All right, so we have ourselves a positive test. There's sodium hydroxide floating around in there because of the sodium reacting with the water. And usually when I'm doing this in class, my students love to see it twice. Now, it's not going to get any pinker, but they like to see it rolling around on the surface of the liquid. So let's do it one more time. Here we go. You see the vapor coming up, that's the hydrogen gas. And we see that it looks like smoke, but it's actually water vapor mixed in with the hydrogen. And any of the alkali metals would do this, but the lower you go down, the more reactive they get. So sodium is not very reactive with, well, the sodium is reactive with the water, but if you try something like potassium or cesium even, you can get an explosion because there's so much hydrogen gas produced in such a short period of time. So this is the demo of alkali metals reacting with water, sodium metal.